Hello again. Uh, in the previous videos, you could see how we prepare the samples for uh, this kind of analysis, how we weigh them, how we dilute them, and after they are ready for the analysis, we start with the instrumental analysis of, of, of our samples. Uh, this instrument that you can see here is a, a microwave plasma atomic emission spectrometer. Uh, this type of uh, instrumentation is uh, applying uh, optical technique for the analysis of different elements. It's mainly intended for uh, metals, but also for some non-metals. Uh, the principle uh, of the work of this instrumentation is actually that uh, all your samples need to be in a liquid phase. Uh, so that's why we are doing all the digestion with the, with the acids. So all elements that we are trying to uh, analyze later on needs to be in a, some kind of a homogeneous liquid. Uh, it can be either uh, acid base, uh, that is uh, usually the case. It can be also organic depending on the type of the sample and the use value of the result. And uh, after that, all these samples are being introduced uh, in plasma or the, uh, the analytical, uh, uh, analytical part of the instrumentation where all uh, anal analysis actually is happening. Uh, plasma is um, uh, uh, on an elevated temperature where vaporization, atomization and emission of uh, selected elements is being done. Uh, uh, we first need to select the element and we need to select uh, all the uh, potential uh, analytical wavelengths of each element. You can see that you can, there, there's a very big selection for each element. And the good thing here is that uh, whenever you pick uh, some of the analytical uh, lines, you can also see what could be the possible spectral interferences uh, for that element. And if you are uh, aware of your sample and what else can be present in the sample, you can then choose, and according to the uh, concentration expected, you can then choose the best possible analytical line. Uh, of course, you need to apply the same setting, the same line, and all other optimization steps for as a standard and for samples in order for the results to be comparable. Um, uh, the example that we showed yesterday uh, in the operation mode was for uh, iron. Uh, so uh, we selected the, the, the most analytical uh, line for iron, the most selective uh, and sensitive one. Uh, after the selection of the elements, we also need to uh, select uh, some of the uh, analytical conditions. Uh, that uh, means uh, selecting or optimizing the pressure and the viewing position, uh, number of replicates in, uh, in the repeatability and the repeatability conditions uh, for which we want to analyze each sample, uh, rinse time, uptake time, all these uh, steps uh, need to be the same for standards and samples. Uh, after that, um, uh, we prepare the selection of standards. In this particular case, uh, we prepared eight, eight standards. Uh, for standards, uh, they are prepared uh, using only uh, traceable materials. These are some of the examples of the materials. So uh, the, uh, the whole idea is that uh, whatever value is uh, already given uh, for the reference material uh, needs to be traceable, needs to be produced by only by the accredited producers of reference material, and needs to be accompanied with uh, measurement uncertainty in, or in order to take that into account when uh, when assessing the measurement uncertainty for our measurement results. Um, after uh, preparation of standards and calculating all our standards and all samples, as you could see in the previous videos, were prepared uh, on a gravimetric basis, so uh, all uh, concentrations were related to mass concentrations. Uh, after that, we also select uh, the quality of calibration line and some other parameters. Then, of course, you need to uh, set up the sequence of your uh, standard, of your standards, and of your samples. Uh, uh, apart from only using samples, uh, unknown samples, we also need to uh, uh, conduct continuous uh, quality control. Uh, that means that it's not only uh, needed to have traceable standards for uh, preparing calibration curve, for example, but you also need to every now and then depending on the number of samples you have, to uh, run some quality control samples, such as blanks. Uh, we have several types of blanks, blanks for calibration curve and blanks for the samples. Uh, these blanks for the samples actually include everything but the sample, and they ran 
uh, through the whole sample preparation procedures as samples did. And of course, we also have some reference materials, certified reference materials of the uh, some similar matrix and similar concentrations uh, for the elements that we expect to uh, see in our samples. So uh, the whole idea is that when you uh, prepare the, uh, the sequence for your samples, uh, every once in a while, every 10 samples or so on, you need to also run at least one uh, reference material. And that is uh, the control for you, not only uh, to take it into account for the measurement uncertainty, but also to uh, make sure that readings from your calibration curve and under your settings are correct, because you can calculate it and see whether you got good uh, results for reference material. If that is the case, you can then conclude that uh, good results are also uh, quality results are also uh, gained for your unknown samples. Uh, after that, uh, the main uh, window in our in our software is this uh, analysis window where you can actually see. Uh, all